You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 13th of February and I'm Nick from Milford. Looking at the key economic news from last week. On Friday, we had the initial jobless claims out in the US coming in at a higher than expected 196,000 compared to market forecasts of 190,000. This is the first time in six weeks that Americans filing for unemployment benefits has increased. We had the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey out late in the week, coming in at 66.4, up from 64.9 last month and better than expectations of 65. Looking deeper at the sub-indexes, current economic conditions improved to 72.6, up from 68.4. However, consumer expectations fell to 62.3, from 62.7 in January. Year-ahead inflation went up to 4.2% from 3.9%, while the five-year inflation outlook remained anchored at 2.9%. We also had various U.S. central bank speakers throughout the week, including Fed Chair Jerome Powell. A consistent message was spoken across many of the committee members, with inflation still elevated and further hikes to come. Moving closer to home, the RBA had their February meeting on Tuesday, where they raised the official cash rate by 25 basis points to 3.35% in line with consensus. The surprise to the market was the hawkish commentary accompanying the rate hike, signalling for further rate hikes to come over the months ahead with a reduced dependence on data to shift this view in the near term. The hawkish commentary has seemingly locked in rate hikes for both March and April, while May looks to be the appropriate point to reassess policy. The statement on monetary policy was out on Friday, and GDP growth, unemployment and inflation forecasts were little changed. Inflation is still forecast to be 4.7% by the end of 2023, and it's expected that inflation will be back within the target range of 2-3% by 2025. The RBA continued to emphasise the risk of a wage growth spiral in such a tight labour market, and reiterated that they will continue to monitor this issue closely. Turning to equity news, reporting season has kicked off here domestically, with 27 companies reporting so far, and 68 to report this week. We had REA, an online real estate advertising company, report their first half results for FY23. Earnings came in slightly ahead of consensus, but cautious guidance was given on the outlook of the property market. We also had a number of REIT names report throughout the week, including Mervac, Region Group and BWP, all coming in broadly in line with consensus. In the US, reporting season continued. A company of note was Walt Disney, who reported a strong result and outlined plans to improve profitability by cutting $5.5 billion in costs. This cost-cutting exercise included plans to eliminate 7,000 jobs, adding to the list of companies laying off workers amid global economic uncertainty. An interesting company development last week was Google's parent Alphabet releasing their latest AI technology. The internally developed technology was unveiled on Tuesday, and when it produced a factual error in the demo, over $100 billion was wiped off Alphabet's market cap, and the stock was down up to 9% by Wednesday. Looking to the week ahead, we have a very busy week with both reporting season ramping up here in Australia and a raft of economic data globally. Starting in the US, we have the January inflation print out on Wednesday, with consensus at 0.4% month on month, up from 0.1% in December. We also have retail sales out on Thursday. Another important data print to get a gauge in the consumer. The market is forecasting 1.6% month on month, up from minus 1.1% in December. In the UK, we have the employment data out on Tuesday, and the inflation data out on Wednesday, with the market forecasting unemployment to stay flat at 3.7% and for inflation to decrease to minus 0.4% month on month. Here in Australia, we have the employment data out on Thursday, an important print that the RBA will be watching very closely. We also have the Westpac Consumer Confidence Survey out, and RBA Governor Lowe is also speaking during the week. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week.